What's going on YouTube? Today we got a special one here. We've got a Tri-Axis Midnight and uh, this is kind of how they come in this nice little refined wooden piece in this box. Um, I'm not going to get too much into detail on the actual box itself so let's open this guy up and take a look at kind of comes with this guy. So off the hop we've got a card with everything about this particular knife, number 76 um, for the Midnight um, production line, I guess. Um, as far as I know, these are custom because you can choose all these different uh, features here. And you can pause, take a look at that if you want. Uh, this guy was just made in May. And uh, there we go. This is kind of what comes in the mail. So a nice little wooden box. Uh, looks great, and it does come with uh, this guy here, which is, looks like a T8 screwdriver, which is kind of cool, and we'll get into what that's for <clears throat> later on. Hint, it's for the backspacer. Uh, we'll put that to the side for now, and let's take a look at this knife. Okay, so Triaxis. This is a company I actually don't really know. They're out of the States. I actually can't find where they're from. Uh, anyway, back into the knife. Uh, it's, uh, everything's designed, built, machined, made, engineered, yada, 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 out of the US, which is awesome. Um, and for the price point on this guy, I wanna say it's around 800 bucks. You know, it's kind of what you'd expect. It's not an inexpensive knife by any stretch and uh, it's certainly unique. So I'm gonna compare this a little bit. Um, as you guys know, I've got a case of knives beside me and uh, I always like to kind of show what I think it compares the closest to. And in this case, there's not a lot of them, but there's one, one particular knife that I'll say it is in almost every way so, so similar with and that is the Oz Roosevelt. And that is in no way a bad thing. As we know, they're uh, making a ton of them. Highly successful knife brand and uh, design. And to be compared with it, it's pretty cool. Um, I will say this before we get into this as well. This knife is certainly early on in its life, being that there's less than 100 of these. And uh, certainly some room for improvement. Um, as I always say, there's, uh, you know, to get a 90% finished product, is uh, generally pretty good, pretty easy. That last 10% is the hardest 10% to get. So let's get into this. First of all, measurements, ah, cool blade. So let's put that down. Where's my tape measure here? Uh, let's see. Let's take a look here, try to get it as close to the bottom of the camera as possible to give you accurate measurements. Uh, blade length, we are at sharpened two and a half, which uh, I will say you'd think it's smaller than it is, and it's not. Overall blade length, three and a quarter, I'd say. Does that look about right? Three and a quarter. And overall length of the entire knife, we are at seven and three eighths. It looks like here, which is a nice size for an EDC. Um, comparables. We would obviously, we're going to talk a lot about this Oz Roosevelt. I put it in that same conversation, which, uh, you know, I think the Rosie's got a target on its back. Uh, we'll put it in the same conversation as the Shirogorov Neon as well, uh, in terms of size. And um, we could probably even put it in the same conversation because of the size of the blade as the Stellar, which I believe they just launched a new uh, new size of the Stellar to the public, our production version. So we will throw that in the same conversation as the Shirogawa Stellar, which is that guy there. Sprint run, pretty cool little blade, by the way. Um, and what else would I compare it with? Probably the small Sabenza, if I can find one here, which is probably on everybody's mind. It's obviously a little more cleaver-esque, a little bit bigger, longer, deeper blade, very unique. Um, the first thing that kind of came to my mind seeing this blade was uh, the Alamic stuff. Unfortunately, I don't have any of those here, but very cool grind to the knife, but primarily, 
if we're going to compare it with one, it is the Oz Roosevelt. The Rosie, without a question. Um, you know what? Why don't we throw one more in here? The Grimsmo Norseman. Or not Norseman, sorry. The Rask for size, so quite a bit smaller lengthwise than the Rask to give you an idea. And I'll obviously throw a large Sebenza, uh, as which is always a good comparison. And one more, the tried and true heavy hitter, the bug out. So hopefully that's a good spread of products that you can kind of compare to uh, and compare against. I had a, uh, uh, I thought I had a PM2 here as well. Let's do that, everybody knows the PM2. Here we go. There's your PM2 for size, okay? Hopefully that's enough. I know that's the one thing that I always um, want to see in videos is how it compares with other knives in the same kind of category, in the same conversation. So, whew, I can sleep easy tonight now that you guys have seen that. Okay, let's take a look at this knife. So full titanium frame, we've got a nice, uh, real cool uh, utility magna cut kind of blade on here, which actually says, right in that little slot there. And I don't know if the camera's gonna focus on that, but you can kind of see if it's high, if you've got it in 4K, you'll probably see that it says Magna Cut right above the pivot. Speaking of that pivot, it's kind of, uh, looks like a baseball diamond kind of shape to it, which is unique. Uh, nicely fit in and, and sunk in, nice and smooth. You can almost not tell um, that it's in there. Nice fit, no space on the back side. We've got that T8 pivot, which looks good. And then a couple other little pivots that, uh, without taking it apart, we've got one, two, three. So I don't know how those pivots actually tighten down. We'll have to kind of go into that possibly in another video if they uh, go into the frame or if they screw into each other. I don't know. I don't know what the hardware is in this scenario, but they are both T8s. It is a frame lock with nice smooth action, perfect, <clears throat> perfect centering. And I know it kind of gets lost in the darkness there in the quote, midnight perhaps. Uh, we've got midnight written on the back of the backspacer here, which looks terrific. Uh, and then that spot on the backspacer here, which is for that nice long 40 mil, is it 40 mil? I don't know, uh, little tool, yep. Yeah, T8, and that goes into the into the uh, backspacer, or sorry, into the into the pocket clip. That's an interesting design. I don't think I've seen that before, and how they've achieved that. I feel like uh, that's kind of cool. So obviously, make sure that blade's not in there. Otherwise, you'll wonder why it only goes in about a centimeter. Um, okay, so talking about this knife, what makes this, in my opinion. The next Rosie, and we're probably eight minutes in or so now, and I apologize for taking that. Well, besides the obvious size comparison, we can draw a lot of conclusions between the two, uh, both in the ergonomics as well as kind of the uh, the quality of, of the machining work. Uh, remember, there's less than 100 of these out there. This one, there's what, 15, 16, 1700 of now? They've learned the process. They've done a ton of work on it. Um, I think that this knife, if it gains some popularity, it will absolutely get there. So let's uh, talk about it here. In hand, a couple obvious things here we can see. I remember I'm an extra large glove. I've got room in my hand to hold the blade. No problems, it's actually quite comfortable. And I would even argue in the back held position, right? The Rosie doesn't even fit in my hand in the in the back position. Okay. Now something the Rosie has kind of done real real good of is kind of that forward position. See how both have that uh, extra holding spot underneath the pivot here on this one, which kind of gets that forward feel where all of a sudden you've got a nice little overlap coming out of your hand. Well, this one that forward choke is way forward. And you've got real nice perch on that blade. And lo and behold, look at all that room in your hand. So this is gonna to appeal to someone that's got even bigger hands and maybe the Rosie's a little bit too small for you. 
but for real fine cuttings, oh yeah, you can choke forward, Oof. real nice. Now, I've gone with this real cool finish that uh, they call, I think, the Musgrave, or Musgav, I think Musgrave. What does the card say? Musgrave. <laughs> there you go. Which, uh, to me, kind of looks like, uh, you know, some puzzle pieces kind of put together. And to me, that is so unique and looks so cool. You can get it on one side. You can get it on both sides. Um, the options are, are endless. On this particular knife, I also went with the Backspacer, or not Backspacer, the uh, Lanyard Delete. So in the corner here, they typically cut that out and uh, allow you to put a lanyard. Now, you know, if you've known me for long enough, I don't particularly uh, enjoy lanyards and it's not a big selling feature to me. So I figured, hey, if I'm going to get a knife made, I may as well uh, do the lanyard delete. I went with the, uh, the high blue all around, which uh, looking at it now looks a little different between what's on here and what's on the backspacer. Uh, a little bit, I can't recall if I did the exact same uh, or not, who knows. Looks looks real good, close enough. Anyway, um, what else? The pocket clip is simple. Let's get this guy. The pocket clip is simple. It's not touching the frame either. Hopefully you can see that, which is nice. And tension-wise, there's lots of it. So well designed, nice and tight, no rattles, no no nothing. Uh, I think we've got a real nice production plus kind of knife here. Um, back to the Ergos here. So it looks like we've got some cool jimping, um, angled jimping. Now I've seen that before and I guess the logic is that primarily it's a right-handed knife and I guess that's the angle at which, you know, it's you get more traction on the blade, I, whatever. Uh, it just, you know, sometimes when you change the symmetrical, the symmetry of something up just enough, it uh, just adds a little flair to it. I think that's cool. Otherwise, nice and flat along the top of the blade, and then it thins out. Uh, hopefully I can change, get that focus. There you go. Thins out as we go back down, then widens back up, and then thins back down. There's a lot going on on this blade. Real cool. I've obviously done like a kind of a stone wash on it, which I always like, but it almost has like a, almost like a mirror finish on the actual edge itself, which is nice. Really well done. It's just how cool is that, man? Like, real, real cool. Nice and sharp, nice and pointy. Just overall, very well done. Um, overall, very, very well done. Now, ergos of the, uh, so we talked about the ergos of the, the hold. I feel like this is actually more comfortable than the Rosie. The forward position, I'd say the Rosie is more comfortable in, but you can certainly utilize that for sure for some fine cutting and the flatness on the top of the blade, make it real nice. Um, <clears throat> in terms of opening and closing, you know, the Rosie is a ergonomic masterpiece. When it comes to, to opening these guys, you can, you know, push it out with your finger and your thumb. You can reverse flick it with the back of your finger. Um, it, it's just so easy and so nice and rounded and smooth. This guy, I feel like, just like if we're comparing, look how it's a little bit higher for your finger. So I feel like this is more meant, like you can obviously flick it out with your thumb. That's not a problem. The detents, uh, you know, not, eh, it's medium, I'd say. You can definitely flick it out with your thumb, no problem. It's, uh, you know, your, your finger falls right on it. I, I would say I'd be more comfortable flicking it out with a reverse flick. It just seems to want to go out a little easier for me that way. Um, not sure what's comfortable for you. Either way is uh, absolutely money on this knife, so it's not a problem. Uh, I just, every time I look at this man, like, I love how tall that blade is. And I just look at it and I wonder why. Like, look how much of that, like, look where it's going into the handle. Bup, 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 bup. You've still got, like, this much of the handle that's not even covering the blade. So there's some room for improvement there. Um, <clears throat> we've got a metal lock bar insert, which is now becoming the norm. And I always say it's not just from a replacement perspective that you want this. It's from the... Um, tuning of metallurgy between them, 
so you don't get lock stick. You know, if you have the right material and magna cut, uh, you don't want titanium rubbing on that, you want XYZ instead. So in this case, absolutely, I love having a metal lock bar insert. And this one originally, when I looked at it here, I'm going, where is it? They've done a really good job of building that in. And I'd like to, absolutely like to take this guy apart, and see what's on the inside, because I can already see some treats, and some hints. There's lots of etching on the inside and hollowing out. It's a great looking knife. I'm gonna show that now, hopefully. If, there's, if the camera wants to peek in. You can see it's hollowed out, or machined out, sorry. I'll go from the back. And oh, there's some writing there. I don't know what that says, but uh, what do we got? Uh, Tri-axis midnight number 76, and then there's the date 0507, 2023. That's cool. So each one's not only a numbered, but it's dated. That's awesome, I love that kind of detail. So I'm gonna have to do another video on this because I'm not gonna take this apart right now, but uh, showing the inside of that because it's just flipping cool. Um, on the ergonomics of the actual knife, let's see. Yeah, that is ever so slightly on the lock bar. It is rolled up uh, taller than the other side. Uh, on the rosy, I don't think they do that, do they? They do not. So there's your rosy by comparison. And you can see that uh, it is not raised. It's just got a nice bevel to it. So on this one, it's raised ever so slightly. The gap between the two sides is a little bit tighter, but not in a bad way. And then obviously you have the nice bevel on this side, which is awesome. So holding it, it just fits like a glove. Uh, we've got about a 50%, I'd say, lock up which is, you know, now kind of getting a little high, I'd say, or is that pretty normal? I mean, you know, I, 25 is kind of becoming pretty normal, as you can see, compared the two. And that just might be blade stock, right? Which I obviously don't have calipers to measure, nor do I want to. But it's, you know, pretty normal for an EDC size. Um, some of the things I'd improve on this First of all, it's got to be on bearings. It's just too smooth. Uh, let's see, let's do my test here. So flat on the cutting board. And then I like to be able to park it midway down and not drop, which it does, but it is easy enough to move. That's like my new thing. There, that'll give you the angle of the blade. This is right under the camera. So as we move it, very light, very light. And it does, oh, it drops at the very end, so. There you go, by itself, really good. It feels like a rosy, like it's like the same kind of detent, it's the same action. Um, it's just easy, man. Look at that. Oh, missed that one. Yeah, it feels like a rosy. That's the, the best comparison. Now, a couple things. Remember I was talking earlier about sometimes symmetry if you if you kind of hide in plain sight a little bit like this and you just change a little bit and you kind of go against the rule it makes it look cool well there's one complaint that i have on this knife you know symmetry side down here i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you the pocket clip this kind of annoys me there's a lot going on here so they've done this really cool way to kind of hide the screws even though there's screws everywhere on it one two the T8, so essentially two and a half per side, right? One, two, three here, and then two, and then blank. But they've gone out of their way to hide that screw, which is fine. Looks cool when it's kind of like that. But then you don't have the symmetry here, right? You have a little, a little spacer there, you've got the pocket clip, and then another spacer that goes all the way to the top. To me, this junction right here just looks, it doesn't look symmetrical, and that bugs me. It's not a big deal, uh, but I'm allowed to be critical. At this price point, I'm allowed to be critical. It's all nice and flush and fit and smooth. There's nothing wrong with it, but it just kind of, I don't know, it's just my opinion that uh, symmetry is important on a knife. And I don't know how you would do that differently. I, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a knife designer. I just look at these things. 
It's just uh, one of those things that I would honestly just say it. that's the first thing that caught my eye is that it's not symmetrical. Even though it's cool. And maybe that's because I changed the clip color. And if I, if I did it all the same color, it wouldn't bug me. I don't know. But it's just something. Something to, to note. Um, what else is not symmetrical on this? Obviously, the blade is kind of got a cool... What is that kind of... Like, Alamic Total. Is a total Alamic vibe to that. Yeah, cool. Um, otherwise, like I said, I've got the Anno on that. You can do a kind of flat face. You can do uh, all kinds of stuff. But I feel like when you do this kind of etching in it, you've got to color it. And you can do whatever you want. Make it gold, blue, green, um, whatever. Um, I, I just think that when you color it and then stone wash it, I just think that looks so good. Don't you? If I were to redo it, I would probably do a non-colored backspacer. Not because I was trying to match it, I think, if I remember. I'd probably just do a stonewash backspacer to match the handle. And I think that would just pop even better. It's nice. But for the price, I think they're going to sell a ton of these. You know, you're in that, uh, you're in that Oz, rosy kind of conversation, fit, finish, feel. And I love how the front side here, they've kind of done that cool, they've hidden the hardware, right? Uh, which you can, by the way, change that color to match. I, I changed uh, this to match the clip, which is the same, just so you know. So if you want this to kind of hide even more, you could probably even make it like a stone wash or whatever. What would be real cool is if they figured out a way to match that pattern onto that hardware. Maybe they do it, I don't know, but that would be next level. Because I would just take it up from a 9.9 .9 right to a 10, in my opinion. Just how cool would that be? Probably difficult to do, but it would be cool. Now, we talked about the pocket clip, uh, you know, accessibility. That's cool. It's just one of those cool features that I like. I don't know. Uh, flex on the actual lock bar is next to nothing. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. And do we have an over travel? We do, which is awesome. Uh, I honestly think we've got a winner here, guys. I think this is going to be right up there with an Oz Roosevelt. And I remember watching a video. Who did it? Um, Pocket Priorities. He did a video on uh, on this knife. He, um, I feel maybe a month ago, month and a half ago. And uh, he really liked it. And um, I'll be honest, I understand why. I think they're knocking this out of the park. There's there's a few little details that I would uh, adjust comparatively. Like if if this is the gold standard right now on the EDC kind of everything Kulu kind of knife, I think that uh, this you know the Alamic guys are gonna love this first of all. But I think you're gonna get a lot of rosy guys into it. That's like hey, first of all they're available. Get a book spot. You can get in 30 days or so. And, uh, and fully customize it. Change your colors. Change your blade finish. Change anything you want. Um, I think that's going to appeal to a lot of people, and because these are so hard to find, I think you're opening the door up to sell a crap ton of these. So, you know, I, I don't know if they're going to change the design, I don't know, quite frankly, if they're going to watch my video, and also, I don't think they're going to care more than anything, but, um, yeah, the only complaint I would say is that little, that little clip is just not symmetrical, and that bugs me, um, otherwise, you know what? They've done a good job of integrating it and doing that design. It's funky. It's uh, kind of new school on the design front. And uh, I think it looks great. Feels absolutely wonderful in hand. You can flip it in all kinds of different ways. Um, I, I think this is an absolute winner. And this one is going nowhere. I am going to throw this into the permanent case because uh, I just have a sneaking suspicion these are going to be going... Uh, they're going to pop off. I get that feel. And I might even carry it, because I love the action. I'm going to fire this guy out a few more times with the mic beside it, so you guys get to, if you've made it 25 minutes in, uh, if you want to hear the sounds of it, then absolutely, I'll show that. But I'm going to do a couple seconds of that here. And move that out of the picture. Um, oh. 
Man, I am just killing myself here. I'm so used to flicking out with a, uh, the thumb stud, and uh, it's not working for me. Because I'm, I'm used to flicking up, like on a McNeese, and this one needs to go definitely to the side. Just with that little cut out there. That's why I feel like the Spidey, the reverse, it's just a little, for me anyway, with bigger hands, it just feels a little more natural. But yeah, absolutely terrific blade. I think they're going to sell a lot of these. Uh, if you're interested in one, you know, hit up the website, try Axis, uh, talk to the guys, let them know I sent you. Uh, they'll be like, who the hell's that? And I'll be like, ha joke's on you. But real cool knife. I would have uh, zero problems recommending this. It uh, just feels cool. It, uh, another, another company I'm going to compare it with, it actually kind of gives me the feel of like a Trevor Burger in uh, the fit and finish. Very similar. There's your Urban by comparison. There you go. All right, guys. Well, thanks for stopping by and thanks for checking out the, the video and uh, taking a look. Appreciate it as always. If you have any questions, leave them below. Like, subscribe, share. And until next time, we'll catch you, catch you later, okay? Cheers, guys.